Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar series brought to you by the Boss Graduate Students of the Department of English. And without wasting much time, we will dive straight into today's talks, which will be centralized around the team, defining the purpose, the story behind our stories. And for today's talks, we have a panel of speakers from both the fourth and second semesters, which will be preceded by the questionnaire towards the end of the session. So if anyone has any questions regarding a particular talk, it would be appreciated if you could lay down your doubts, maybe in the text section or at a given time. And now to start off with our talks, I would like to kindly request Ms. Chong Pineng with her topic, Goal Setting for Personal and Professional Success, and Mr. Kutozo with his topic, Overcoming Procrastination, to kindly take their time one after the other. Thank you much. Uh, hi, hi everyone. Uh, am I audible? Hello? Yes, you are audible. Thank you. Please carry on. Can, can somebody respond? Am I audible? Yes, yes, you're audible. You can oh, carry on okay, with your thank talks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I, I would like to thank our almighty God for sustaining our lives. We are in a crucial time in the midst of this pandemic, but we're blessed enough to join this session from the comfort of our home. So um, let's give thanks to our almighty God. And secondly, I, I thank the, the faculty or the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to speak on the topic, goal setting for personal and professional success. Well, um, I am somebody who loves so much uh, to speak, uh, to share, and to take part in a seminar and other functions. And when I do so, I used to base my sharing either from the Bible or, or some books being written by renowned uh, writers. But um, today, I'm not going to do so, but rather I would like to base my sharing. Um, I, I want myself to be the practical example of today's sharing as my topic is goal setting for personal and professional success, I would like to focus on my own personal experiences. Well, um, I hope we all have dreams and goals to accomplish at certain age and we worked on it. So is me. I, I, I came from a very humble family and since childhood I have, I have dreamed that one day uh, before I hit 25, before I became 25 years old, I would like to complete my studies and, and work and be settled and be an independent woman. That's what I dream and I have been working on it. And through my journey, I would like to share that. Um, my, my life has been ups and downs, a roller coaster like every one of you, like yours. And uh, when I... You know, when I was a small kid, um, I, I used to really admire my Sunday school teacher because she was so kind and she used to teach us to respect others and teaching stories from the Bible and she was molding and shaping our lives. So I, I was like looking at my Sunday school teacher, I, I told myself, when I grow up, I want to be a theologian and I'll be a Sunday school teacher and, and I will teach and motivate others. I will mold and shape the lives of children like my Sunday school teacher is molding mine. Uh, that's what I said and I really want to be a theologian. And as I grow up and I jump into my high school, I, I have met uh, this teacher, my English teacher, and she was so inspiring. And then the way she teached was so very different. And I started to like her again. And I thought myself, okay, uh, when I grow up, I want to be an English teacher because I like my teacher so much. And for a time being, my life was shifted from to become a Sunday school to to be an English teacher. And as I grow again uh, in my higher secondary, I met a few bunch of friends. Uh, they were so talented, and among them, one one of a good friend of mine was so much into singing, and she used to perform. And she was a worship leader in singing. Her I was so inspired, and then I really admire her, and then. 
I, I told her, I want to be like you, and then I want to sing like you. I want to praise God. And she said, um, nothing is impossible. If you want to be a singer, you can be. So uh, seeing my friend, I was so inspired, and I started taking up a uh, music class and wanting to be like my friend. Uh, my friend also told me that whenever there are programs, they used to invite me, and then I used to go and perform, and I get paid. I earn through singing, and then uh, I am an independent woman. So seeing her, I like her so much, and I was like taking up music class and singing. But then I realized, I slowly realized that singing was not my gift. I was not meant to be a singer, which is why, though I took up music class and learned piano, I I, I do sing and perform in the church, but I didn't earn like my friend because my friend was, uh, her gift, her talent was uh, music and my talent was something different and I didn't realize, uh, which is why I couldn't succeed. And like that, my whole life, I have been spending admiring people and wanting to be like them. And as I am in my verge of graduation, uh, I met this an Asian man, and he was asking, what do you want to become? So after joining my master's, after joining Tatsa College, seeing my professors, the way they teach us, the way they, they inspire us, seeing them, I mean, I, you know, I've learned so much from them, like Dr. Elika, Dr. Anjan, uh, Rosie, KV, and all of you inspired us so much that once again, I, I want to like move back to teaching profession. And I, I told them that I want to be in a teaching profession. And he was like, you were in master's and then you would have, you know, opted something else instead of being in a teaching profession. And he also asked me like, you want to be in a teaching profession because uh, you are afraid to correct other complete exams or or uh, is it that you will not get other job which is why you're sticking around to the teaching profession and i say no not because i am afraid to to correct another complete exam but seeing my profession my professors i am inspired so much and i want to be like them which is why i, I will be in teaching professions when i jump once i i complete my masters that's what i told him and one day i was sitting back at home and slowly looking back into my life and when i look back i i realized that i have been spending my whole life trying to be everybody else and then i did not know what my gift i was so frustrated and then I, I prayed to God. I literally cried and I kneeled down and I prayed to God, Lord, I have been spending my whole life trying to be everybody else. And then I couldn't. What is my gift? What am I good at? What's my gift? And I prayed so hard. And I, I prayed and I waited for answer from the Lord. Yes, God did not open up the heaven's door and shouted at me that this is your gift. You are good at this. No, it didn't happen. It was really frustrating. And I kept praying. And one day as I slowly, you know, think about my life and then trying to recall what have I done. So slowly I realized that I, I used to be a paid host. And whenever I, I host or I, I do, uh, I speak on stage, well, there were some people who used to be like comfort and telling me that I'm so blessed through your, uh, you know, sharing, through your preachings. And I slowly realized Maybe I, my gift is not to be a singer, not to be a teacher, not to be a Sunday school teacher, or maybe I am something different. My goal is different. Uh, my primary concern was shifted to myself and then trying to analyze myself. And in that juncture, I, I am given the opportunity to, to host uh, a talk show. And then uh, I pray to God, Lord, is this my talent? If this is my gift, then please let me know, and then please bless me. And so um, after praying, I, I slowly realized that my gift was something different than uh, the people that I followed my whole life. And today, I'm the first person in Naglen to be the talk show host. And by God's grace, my channel was monetized, and I'm so earning from YouTube. So this is my short testimony. I'm, I know we're running out of time, but I request Miss Rosie to present my slides. 
So uh, I, I want to ask you all, do your professional and personal goals complement each other? And then are you doing the things that you are doing because others are doing? Or is it your love to? Because from my personal experience, if you do things just because others are doing, then you're not going to be fruitful. But when you do things that you love, you will seriously successful. You will bear fruits. And when you do things that you love, you won't get tired and in fact your energy will be recharged that is what i've experienced in my life and i i want uh, everyone to ask yourself the question that i listed out are you the type of person that others want to follow can you create vision for yourself that others can delete you so are you attending events to draw inspiration from others because we are human beings we're social animals we socialize and we learn from one another it's why that is why it's really important to attend events and learn from others just like we're doing now. So um, I want you guys to ask yourself the questions that I put forward and then realize. And I also want to encourage you, if you're doing that you don't love, if you're doing things just because others are doing, then you're not going to succeed. You will not success. So it is never too late to restart. If you think you are not in the right track, then do come back. And then if you're still confused like me, you're just going with the flow, like wherever the wind blows, just like me, spending my whole life. And it's very important to ask God, to, to ask God, and then what is your gift? What are you good at? Only then you can set your personal and professional goals. I'm telling you, there are so many people out there, maybe successful in their professional career, but only God knows what they have been through in their personal life because they are spending their life trying to impress others and not doing that they love and i also want to let you all remind that no job is too sophisticated and no job is too small if you're happy with what you're doing i think that matters a lot uh, which is why i think again and then for for my fellow classmates and my juniors and whoever attending this session it's very important to ask god and and to you know to realize what you're good at and then to work on it. Otherwise, you'll be like me, spending your whole life trying to be everybody else, so confused with your life and not knowing what to do. So I, I would like to conclude my sharing by encouraging you all that uh, your value doesn't decrease based on someone's inability to see your words. If you know your words, you can work on it and you'll be successful in your life. Uh, I am diverting so much from my topic. Uh, I, I'm really sorry, but um, yeah, I now give the remaining time to the next speaker. Thank you, thank you for your patience. Hello. I think I'm audible as well as I'm clear. Yes, you can carry on with your talk. All right. Uh, I want to start off with a quotation. How do you define your use of time? Are you using it? Are you wasting it? Are you spending it? Or are you killing it? It's been said that killing time is not murder, but it's a suicide. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, respected uh, the moderator, Matsu, uh, the faculties, seniors, and all my dear friends. I am very privileged to be given this wonderful opportunity to express some of my thoughts and ideas. My name is Kuto Zovero from MA Second Semester. The topic that I have chosen for my presentation is a very familiar topic called as overcoming procrastination. Overcoming procrastination. Uh, this topic is not a new topic uh, for all of us. And please do notify me if uh, there is a static disturbance in my audio. All right, so uh, I will split this matter concern into uh, concern matter into four segments. In the first segment, uh, let's take a quick glimpse of what procrastination is. We would like to look into the meaning of procrastination. When I talk about procrastination, it's uh, one of my favorite words in English out of thousands of words. And I'm sure all of us uh, also find this word to be very uh, rich in its meaning. Tim Urban, who is one of the internet's most admired writer in his TED Talks, he says that there is literally no one in this world who does not procrastinate. 
and I believe his idea is uh, quite acceptable and reasonable, and also it is quite applicable in today's context. Uh, all of us procrastinate in one way or the other, and it's inevitable. Procrastination is uh, synonymous for words like delay, deterring, hesitation, stalling, etc. Uh, it is uh, believed to have been derived from the Latin word procrastinatus, which means to defer for tomorrow or to put off for tomorrow. And it was first coined by Hesiod in around 700 BC. And to make the concept more clear, um, I, if, if we are, if we are uh, delaying something or keeping it for later, the things that we can do now, uh, that shows we are procrastinating. It could be a small thing or it could be a big thing. It doesn't matter. As long as we, are, uh, we aren't completing our tasks at the given time, we are a procrastinator and we are a thief of time. The choice is ours, whether we want to be a thief or not. Anyway, uh, so this takes us to the, to the next segment of my paper, that is, why do people procrastinate? Why do we procrastinate? Uh, there could be many reasons why people procrastinate, and I think uh, it differs from person to person, based on their experiences as well. When it comes to procrastinating, uh, we usually say, I still have enough time. And considering, considering the fact of time, we are all into the profession of students, and it is very common to keep, to keep uh, delaying or deferring our works for later or for tomorrow. We procrastinate because we think we have enough time, but we are not in the sense that, that enough time becomes little time. Little time converts to no time, and eventually it alters into no time, and we usually end up being disappointed. I think we are procrastinating because we disrespect the value of time. Uh, we must know that the most important thing one can use to become the thing that we are thinking to become is to respect our time and go along with the flow. There is also a tendency uh, that we procrastinate because uh, there is paralysis, paralysis in our time management. Uh, we fail to take the perfect decision at the correct time. And I think we procrastinate because uh, we are sort of irresponsible. We also procrastinate because uh, there is no adrenaline, adrenaline rush uh, inside us that pokes us to do so. Until and unless we are being pressurized by the situation, we don't just feel like doing it on time. And I think that's something we need to deeply ponder upon it and, take, uh, and tackle it at the earliest. Uh, without stretching much on this segment, uh, let's, let's look to the next point. I have entitled the third segment of my paper as, how does it affect us? How does procrastination affect us? When we talk about the effects of procrastination, I'm sure all of us have experienced a lot. Since uh, we all have procrastinating, I'm sure we also know the effects too. For the most common uh, metaphor will be uh, doing our assignments and projects. We always want to keep it for later, for tomorrow, or for 11th hour of a dose. And as a consequence, uh, it results in losing marks and also getting lectures from teachers at the same time. My mother uh, always reminds me to never keep things pending. She would say, do what you have to do now because later will bring its own work and everything will get messed up. I think we can all agree to, to her statement because we all know that time and tides waits for none of us. The effects of procrastination covers a huge area. Uh, it affects our mental health, it affects our spiritual growth, it also affects our physical health. And as a result, we tend to uh, stop progressing forward in our life. Procrastination uh, drags us backward and we fail to see the success in our life. Taking into consideration my own account of procrastination experience, I am saying that uh, I don't procrastinate anymore, uh, but speaking on the basis of being better than I used to be, I would like to share some of uh, the negative impacts that I face when I procrastinate. When I keep anything pending for tomorrow or for later, the things that I have to do now, I don't have peace of mind. 
uh, uh, peace of mind and the outcome is that I fail to do other works or I fail to perform other works with perfection too. Things get piled up and my mind is filled with uh, tensions, anxiety, stress and whatnot. And whenever I keep uh, things on clench, I am appending more miseries uh, to the already existing miseries. And once I commence with this convention of procrastinating, it turns out uh, to be more rigid and more stiff to overcome. And slowly it affects every domain and realm of my life. You know, uh, we, we never really, really uh, display a cavernous thought on it, but if, if we ponder upon it uh, with more custody, I think uh, it's really a monster that is holding us in reverse manner, and it'll devour us up like a virus that will leave us being uh, helpless, uh, that will leave us uh, being in a miserable condition. But we should always know that there is always a way out of our substandard habits and execution, and the rewards of it are just wonderful. So having uh, faith on ourselves, uh, we would like to move uh, to the next point, and it will be the final segment from my paper. Based on my experience, uh, I would love to assemble some useful mechanisms uh, that I uh, use to overcome procrastination and also to remunerate also the remunerate of it. What I personally feel is that strong determination and self-dedication is the key to achieving anything in our life. This may sound absurd, but every day after the get day gets over, I always go back to my bed and try to reflect and retrospect on the things that I have tendered and also try to construct plans uh, for the following day. And we all have different techniques in overcoming hurdles uh, in our own entity. What I usually do is uh, I never try to turn off the alarm when it rains. And I think that's a great procurement for me, uh, personally speaking. And researchers have also said that those who wake up early in the morning uh, has the lower tendency to procrastinate uh, than the others. But I'm also sure all of us love to procrastinate. All of us love to turn off the alarm and go back to sleep. And I think that's where the root of procrastination also begins. Um, like I've mentioned earlier, uh, we need to start with the habit of completing the given tasks at the right time without uh, letting the situation pressure, pressurize us. And we all know that this is 21st century and we are in a world where science and technology govern the universe. The gadgets that we use are 50% responsible for procrastination. So I think it's best uh, to be careful with what we do with the technologies uh, that we possess. Uh, one thing that we ought to keep uh, in mind is that gadgets are created for us to monitor them and not to be monitored by them. Uh, being inclusive, we, we all have become a slave to the gadgets. Um, I think the foremost tool that is uh, distracting us and taking our life apart is the technologies that we get access to. And the possibility of overcoming uh, procrastination largely depends on it. If I have to share based on my own personal experience, as a procrastinator. Uh, we need to have the discerning ability to plumb for what is good and what is not for, for ourselves. And the most important thing is to love what we do. If we don't respect and love our work, I think uh, we, don't, uh, we will never be content with the outcome. Whatever we do, uh, we must do it with our full heart and care. So in the dissolution, uh, in the end, uh, I would say that overcoming procrastination is uh, one of the greatest achievements uh, that one can be rewarded with. The willpower to do away with procrastination uh, should be reached out from within, within us and no one will apprise you or potent you to do so. so uh, the decision is completely based on our own. Uh, 
the thing that we uh, we have to retain uh, in mind is that once we do away with procrastination or procrastinating, we become more res responsible and our vision uh, to grasp decision becomes uh, more vivid. And I believe that the journey of success has taken its root. Um, I want to challenge all of us with, uh, with one quotation by Abraham Lincoln as I close my speech. Uh, it says like this, you cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. I want to repeat that for us. You cannot escape the responsibility of tomorrow by evading it today. Thank you, everyone, for bearing and listening to my thoughts and ideas amidst your business schedule. Stay safe, and I hope we all meet in person and interact with one another once the situation is under control. Uh, over to you, Matsu. Thank you, Ms. Chongpining and Mr. Kutozo for sharing your wonderful insights taken from your own experiences. Next up, we have Mr. Lim Tsumong with his topic, self-reliance and teamwork. So I would like to request him to kindly take his time. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is doing okay. And I want to thank the college and the teachers of English department for organizing today's event and also giving us the privilege to speak on today's webinar meet. So today, my topic is self-reliance and teamwork, and uh, I'll be speaking more on self-reliance, and at the conclusion, I will speak on how self-reliance is uh, important and how it is and how it can be applied in the teamwork. So, um, yeah, okay. Please to let me know if there's a lag in my audio, and then I'll be turning off my camera because my neck is running at a very low MP, so I hope every one of you can understand. Thank you. So as we talk about self-reliance, when we talk about self-reliance, it can be simply understood as the ability to do things and also to take decisions by oneself, by counting and trusting on, your, on our own instincts and our own ideas. But it does not mean that we cannot work our trust with others because self-reliance doesn't mean that everything has to be done by ourselves. It is also not about financially being independent or also shouldering every hardship all by our individual. It could be all about being able to identify the problems and also solving them by finding solution. To solve this, what we need is that uh, most of us, uh, many times we try to uh, stay in the same place by not knowing what to do or not knowing what the solutions and what the outcome might be. So the most thing that uh, the self-reliance is that we need to understand and we need to solve this by uh, being self-reliant in knowledge, wisdom, understanding, by being patient, and also by putting our efforts in everything we do or say. Uh, there's a saying that which goes as we are responsible for getting caught in the rain because by deciding not to carry an umbrella leads to getting trenched. By being prepared, you make the choices of getting caught in some of the life's unpleasant circumstances, which can be like failures, failures in economics. It can also be a failures in relationship. It can also be your own personal losses. But by being self, by being prepared, you're in, you increases your chances of succeeding or seizing an opportunity that comes your way. So for when we take, for example, when we take an example of self-reliance uh, in students' life, it is uh, very uh, prominent and it's present everywhere in and I hope every student can understand this because uh, when we talk about exams and assignments we are supposed to be we're not supposed to be panicking or wondering how or uh, how we should take a lot or how the exams can be passed without studying or without putting our efforts so this is most of the things that we students tend to struggle and then instead of wondering how and why is all this happening we need to put our efforts and try to reach out to the teachers for help for example um, we need to understand that we all need someone to rely on and it's okay to reach out for help. This is important because most of the time students, we, tr we tend to shy away and most of the time we, we're not able to face the teachers and we, we most of the times when the question is being asked to us, we are not able to answer and we just stay there as a statue. So uh, the most important thing is that we need to come out of the all, all of our own comfort zone and then we need to reach out to the teachers. We need to ask the teachers what is uh, going on in the class and then what is important for us and all that because the teachers are everyday but the most important thing that the, st and 
that the student, like you said, self-reliance. The students are on find the self-reliance and most of the time they struggle and then the, most of the problems they are being faced by their own self and then uh, most of the time especially in exams we tend to get a lot of problems so uh, self-reliance is very important for the students and we need to understand that as well and also is very important thing especially during this pandemic and lockdown to, uh, being in both we student think why many assignments are being given out uh, and why many online classes uh, why every day there is a class and most of the time we uh, tend to blame the college and the teachers as well, but we don't understand most of the times we students, uh, we don't understand that it is important for the completion of the semesters and it is for our own self and it is important for our future as well. But student, most of the time we try to blame the teachers, we try, we try to blame the college and then we try to like in our own life. This is because we, we like self-reliance. If we are, if we know what is self-reliance, if we try to understand uh, the abilities to do things and take decisions by ourselves, by trusting and counting on our ideas, by working hard, by putting our efforts, then uh, obviously this, I know it's hard, but then life is hard, but then we can all able to overcome this. And then also when it comes to individuality, we take the exam, we can take the example of any one of us, suppose, uh, my both lawyers and then they want me to follow their footstep. However, I spend every spare minute writing poetry. I want to contribute and make a difference to the world and touch people by writing poetry. This is where I find my happiness and decide to pursue a career and as a poet instead of lawyer. It is because of self-reliance that you are able to find who you are and what you want to do in life. You get your own freedom on becoming what you want to be. You get to decide on your career and not others. So this is also another thing which is very much prevalent and present in our, especially in the student's life, because most of the time we are led astray and then we try to please others, we try to uh, walk in the ideas and footsteps of others, not knowing our own abilities, not knowing our own instincts, not trusting our own ideas. But then uh, when we try to put and what, what, when we try to pursue what is good for us, what is, um, what is the ability, what our ability can do, and then what are the things that we can achieve and not depending on what others have achieved, then only we can be contented and happy in life because when you try to walk in the footsteps of others, you will, all of us, we would be contented, we would be happy, even though we may be successful in life, but most of the, but life will be miserable for us, even though we are successful. If we don't follow what our heart says, if we don't uh, focus on self-reliance, so that is the thing. And then many of us still today, we try to live our life based on opinions of others. If you are a student, your parents uh, get to decide what you should study or what your job should, what job you should pursue. Many knuckles like self-reliance and we need to understand the importance of it. We should be responsible for our own life and what we need in our life instead of letting someone else to decide because we will never find happiness through contentment in it. Because here why I'm mentioning many knuckles like self-confidence is that there are many students, uh, there are many graduates, uh, MA students, BA graduate, there are many students, but then why many students are jobless? Why many students are going outside of the state for a job uh, to work in a private company? It's because we are not being self-confident. We are like self-reliance and then we are not being able to know the abilities that we can do. And we're, we're not trying to contribute to the society as well. So uh, if we, if the students of the Nagas, if we try to understand what self-reliance is, what understanding is, then many of us, I can, I, Thing, and it is my opinion that we can be able to contribute to it because uh, if we are being brave, if we are being confident enough, then instead of going outside of the state, we can be able to step back in our own state, try to do a little work. Entrepreneurship can be the most uh, first thing that we can carry on. And then we can also be able to encourage our friends. We can also be able to encourage the society and we can also live our life not being based on others. And in that way, we can be able to contribute because being an educated, being a student, we are being told of what we should be in life and what uh, the happiness in life can be. So these are the things that we need to understand. To be self-reliant also, we need to believe in something that holds merit and there should be nothing holding us back from voicing it with confidence. When it comes to academic, every student should we realize we should realize our own self-reliance we should discover our talents our values 
our educational activities and also strive to be a better student because many many uh, many times we students try to like our own values we try we don't understand what talent is we don't understand what educational activities is we don't know how to strive for a betterment most of the time like our brother have said um, we try to procrastinate every time and then we don't want to work on our own self we don't want to uh, we don't want to be a better person and most of the time we try to blame the other people we try to blame our parents we try to blame our families we try to blame the college so all the things this is all because we don't understand what is self-reliance we don't understand or, or we don't value or we don't try to understand what things are good for us so we should be able to know in what areas or when it comes to academic uh, understanding and knowing your areas of subject in what way or in what subjects you are good or bad it is very important to understand this because uh, most of the time we don't most of the times uh, our subjects have been equally it is equal but then there are some subjects which are easier but then we student uh, tend to take it very lightly and in that way we score very low marks so in that way uh, we should work more harder on the weaker subjects by reaching out to the teachers and try to understand the text and also understand it by reading and analyzing the text as well so that's um, the end of this uh, i'll be speaking that on self-reliance and then now i'll be uh, i'll be speaking on how self-reliance is important in teamwork uh, by being confident in your abilities you are able to support your team in the areas of your strength or which can be uh, creating strong relationship by communicating well with each other supporting and motivating each other and working cooperatively it is said that teamwork makes a dream work i repeat teamwork makes a dream work and it is also widely accepted that teamwork is good. And then here, what is teamwork? Uh, teamwork can be understood as a, a group of individuals coming together to achieve a better uh, goals and dreams. And also it makes things work efficiently because you are able to split the difficult task into simpler ones, then work to complete them faster. It also helps you to develop a specialized skill among the team so that the best person for each task can do it better and faster. There are countless solutions for any task or problems. When a self-reliant team or individual tackles a problem, the project benefits from multiple perspectives, skill sets, and experiences, and all at once. So what we learn is that when teammates work together, we learn each other's strength and correct each other's mistake. That way, everyone will improve. So that's the end of my presentation. And oh, why is it important to improve our abilities to understand self-reliance and teamwork in academic, social development, and individual is because uh, if you don't understand all those things, life will be uh, life will be hard for us. And then it's very important to, uh, especially for the students, uh, those who are presently students, uh, we need to understand our self-reliance. We need to uh, to work with the team. We need to do what is important in academics. For example, studying, doing assignments, putting our efforts and social development by contributing to the society, by being uh, working and being a better person. In that way, we can be able to be a, a better person and also uh, self-reliance and teamwork is a very important for us. So I want to encourage and tell to all my friends and everyone who present out here in today's webinar talk, please try to understand what self-reliance is and then uh, if we understand what self-reliance is in every field, wherever we may be, there will be always be a, a fruitful purpose for every one of us. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Lim Sumong, for your enlightening talk. Proceeding on, we have Miss Kulu with her title, Coping During Uncertain Times, which will be followed by Miss Sneha with her title, Positive Outlook for Personal Growth. If you could kindly take a time in succession. Am I audible? Yes, you can carry on with your talk. Okay, 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 thank you. Uh, a very good afternoon. I'll just keep my video off because my network, the network in my area is really bad. And a very good afternoon to you all. My name is Kalevenu of MA second semester. I, and I thank the English department for organizing this program and giving me a chance to speak. Uh, 
uh, I will be speaking on the topic coping during hard or uh, coping during uncertain times. Uh, we get to see that the world is an uncertain place. Uh, things can change fast and it is difficult to see what's coming next. So we have to learn to be uh, comfortable with our uncertainty. Uh, and uh, the six strategies of coping during uncertain times are uh, one is face the fear. Uh, fear is a natural reaction, but we cannot let it rule us. Uh, don't ask what if. We have to ask what will I do if. Known how things will react, react if things go badly. And two is focus on what you can control. Uh, feeling out of control can be scary. So instead of fretting about the things we cannot escape, uh, focus on the things and work out on things that we can do and do it. Then you will probably feel better for knowing you are doing something useful. And then uh, three is mitigate risk. Uh, it is good to plan for various possibilities, not just the outcome you think is most likely built in contingencies so that whatever happens you are in a solid position to deal what with whatever comes next and uh, be agile and be alert being agile and being alert means you are able to respond to things quickly to different needs or adapt to changing circumstances Uh, think about developing developing uh, new skills which will not only make you valuable uh, but give you new career options too and all the same all the same time be alert stay on top of changes that could affect you and your business the sooner you know the sooner you know about something something the quicker you react and we have to remember to look after ourselves. Uncertainty can cause anxiety and stress, which can damage our health and get us stuck in a vicious circle. Exercise helps clear stress hormones from our body, while meditation and mindfulness can help us relax and reduce anxiety. Uh, talking to someone we trust also helps us find perspective and a problem shared is a problem halved and uh, manage your expectations one of the greatest causes of unhappiness and stress in uncertain times can be comparing comparing how we think things should be with how they are but ask ourselves according to whom after the after the answer, if nobody, it is always good to have goals, but make them our aspirations and not our expectations. And don't resist. There is no doubt we are living through challenging times, but resisting this current reality won't help us recover, learn, grow, or feel better. Ironically, resistance prolongs prolongs our pain and difficulty by amplifying the challenging emotions we are feeling. There, there is a real truth to the aphorism that what we resist persists. And we have to uh, invest in ourselves the best resource that you have right now for making a contribution to the world is you. When that resource is depleted, you, your most valuable asset is damaged. In other words, when we underinvest in our bodies, minds, or spirits, we destroy our most essential tools for leading our best lives. We humans uh, don't do well when we defer maintenance on ourselves. We need to sustain the relationship that brings us connection and meaning. We must get enough sleep and rest when we are tired and we need to spend time having fun and playing just for the joy of it 
and uh, dealing with fear and anxiety uh, during the during these uncertain times uh, many of us are experience experiencing fear and anxiety around how we will finish our semester our summer or future job prospects our finances and of course the health and those around us here are some techniques that might help uh, the first is name it to tame it research has shown that simple act of labeling an emotion can decrease its intensity in the emotional centers of your brain naming these emotions fear uncertainty anxiety can help separate the passing experience of emotions from the self so you don't have to identify with those tempor temporary states of being and when you do encounter a negative emotion not notice it most people do not like being uncomfortable uh, however negative emotional experiences show you important information about yourself there are few things that connect you deeper to yourself than emotions such as fear anger and grief if only you can stop in them and listen and we have to face our mortality if there is one thing that COVID-19 has taught humanity it is that we are very uh, vulnerable to things outside of us right now we might be feeling a sense of uneasiness and fear for ourselves and our loved ones uh, this is awakening to us what it means to be alive we are always facing that some of us are uh, some of us sooner than others but the destination is the same for all we will we will all face that and that makes it important for us to consider how we want to live what we want to do to contribute in the time we have uh, it may be it may be the time for those of us with a spiritual or religious tradition to link into those teachings also uh, dealing with isolation or making connections uh, as university st students or college students our daily lives are uh, normally full of other people our classmates your roommates for those of you who stays in the hostel uh, our teammates or bands or club connections our friends uh, so staying at home at home and socially distancing can be particularly difficult we sympathize uh, try reframing social distancing. Social distancing is a term applied by public health officials to describe group behaviors that can slow down spread of a virus. However, the term is not entirely accurate and may be creating a negative impact on some of us. Uh, the term social distancing implies that you won't get your social needs met or that you are cut from your community which can activate the amygdala or fear center in your brain so try re relabeling this behavior as a special distancing which is a better way to understand it and people are being called to stay at least six feet away from other people to reduce the like likelihood of transmission Thankfully, we live in a time where we can still be social, even when we are miles or even continents apart. The world is incredibly connected now, and simply calling a friend is an act of social closeness. Speak with intention about the situation and encourage those around you to do the same. Explore isolation and options. Uh, you are you're afraid of sitting in your house all day, of being still with yourself, take a pause. A reality check may be in order here. Consider how difficult it is to go to school or work every day or to form healthy relationships or to put food on the table and care for your loved ones. Sitting in your own silence may be hard simply because you have never done it. Can you be curious about this experience rather than just resisting it? Can you find new ways to and new things to do? What will you choose to take from this experience? Okay, so let me uh, give a tip here. 
for my personal personal experiences, uh, what about having a family time together and discuss things? Okay, my family follows a habit of having a time together before or after dinner and share on any topics we want to. Sometimes uh, we'd go on discussing about things for hours approximately. We share uh, we share any topic that we want, uh, like uh, just say, for instance, like uh, like political issues to general knowledge and whatever we want to. And I know that discussion is this this discussion is definitely go, uh, going to help me in the future. And we have to um, we have to learn to create healthy habits in a new world as we adjust to new ways of learning, working, and living. We must find a way. We we must. We may find that many of our former behaviors no longer save us. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh. Please bear with us for a few minutes as we uh, as we have some issues. Hello, I'm so, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, we have to learn to create healthy habits in a new world uh, as we adjust to new ways of learning, working, and living. We may find that many of our former behaviors no longer save us. Change begets change. This is a great opportunity to introduce healthier habits into your days. Be mindful of the news you consume. It is important to get the information that you need from trusted sources, but to do it with intention. Once you get the updates that are important to you, anything more is access. Curate what you allow into your life. Now is the chance to set limits for the sake of your mental health. And we have to realize the power of habits. Your life right now is the mostly the sum of your habits. Take this time to create da daily habits that increase your well-being. Consider a gratitude journal and a meditation practice or even just turning your phone off for uh, an hour before going to bed or start small and start small and know that enduring habits are the result of many small acts and will power performed over time and uh, it is perfectly normal to be stressed anxious or be upset during a pandemic you you may also be curious motivated or excited for the changes uh, that this will bring Whatever mix of emotions you, you are feeling, know that it is never a bad time to ask or seek for help. And we have to learn to accept the uncertainty for what it is. Prepare for yourselves uh, for various outcomes. Address your worries ahead and manage your personal stress levels. Interestingly, uh, we, interestingly human beings cope much better during uncertain times and hopefully put ourselves in a stronger position and whatever comes our way. So I'll end here. Thank you. I give the time to Miss Neha. Hello, am I audible? Can anybody yes, you can just... carry on. Yes, yes, Thank you can you. carry on with your talk. Good noon, everybody. Today, I shall be sharing a few words with you all on positive outlook for personal growth. Well, many people know about the significance of positive outlook, but a very few people realize its worth. So today, let me quickly take you all into the flight of knowing positive outlook 
and let us land together into the airport of realizing positive outlook. Well, I think everyone of you will agree with me when I say the power of positive thinking is remarkable. But before I get into that, let me quickly ask you a question. Can you guess? What does the most successful and happy people think about all day long? The answer is quite simple. Happy people think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. Because when you actually think about what you want and how to get it, you'll feel happier and in greater control of your life. Because when you actually think about something that makes you happy, your brain, your brain releases endorphins, which gives you a generalized feeling of well-being as a result of which you develop a positive attitude. To relate things better, I would like to explain it with an example. So taking the example of the animal kingdom, the lion. The lion is the king of the animal kingdom. The lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. The lion is not the smartest animal in the jungle. The lion is not the heaviest animal in the jungle. Still, lion is the king of the jungle. Not the tallest, neither the smartest, nor the heaviest. Still, still the lion is the king of the jungle. It has a very simple meaning. For you to become successful in life, you don't need to be the tallest. You don't need to be the smartest. You don't need to be the heaviest. Because lion doesn't have all these qualities. Still, lion is the king of the jungle. Lion is not as tall as a giraffe. Lion is not heavier than an elephant, not cleverer than a fox. Still, still lion is the king of the jungle. And we'll have to understand it, why it's like that. Because, because the lion has an attitude. It has a different attitude. Come, I'll explain. This lion has a different kind of attitude that makes every other animal in the jungle afraid of the lion. The monkey regards the lion. The fox regards the lion. What makes a massive animal like the elephant regard such a small kid? Because in front of this elephant, this lion is nothing. It's just a small kid. Regardless of anything, every other animal in the jungle, they regard the lion. Because lion has a different attitude. So let me quickly narrate to you all what do, you, um, what do I mean by the word different attitude. The moment, the moment the elephant sees the lion, the one and the only thing that strikes into the elephant's head is that eater, this lion is the eater of my flesh. It has come to eat and kill me. When in reality, the lion is way more less in power than the elephant, less heavier than the elephant. A simple punch of the elephant could actually kill the lion. Where is the lion? The moment the lion sees the elephant, the one and the only image that strikes into the lion's head is that lunch. This elephant is my lunch. I'm going to kill this and eat this. When in reality, he is less powerful, less heavier, less stronger than the elephant. What happens is that the elephant has already arrested its mind to think beyond. The lion is the king. Because of his belief system, this different attitude, it's nothing. It's the belief system of the lion. However talented you may be, you might have the bestest things with you. You have all the facilities with you. You will fail if your belief system is weak. So this example shows us that there are two ways of looking into the world. Some people only see the things that they want in their life. Whereas some people only see the things that prevents them from getting the things that they want in their life. I repeat, some people see the things, only see the things that they want in their life, whereas some people only see the things that prevents them from getting the things that they want in their life. With this, I conclude. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Kulu and Ms. Sneha for your sessions and for sharing your understanding and perception on the mentioned topics. Today's talk session was taken in relation to what we all go through in our lives, the challenges we face, 
and the way we choose to deal with them. Who we have become today is the consequences of the actions of our past. And today's talks was just a refresher to that and also examples of the way some of our fellow students dealt with them. And at the same time, it's an example for how we can learn from each other and grow in the coming days. Before we conclude with the session for today, I would like to request our dear viewers to raise any concerns or questions that you might have relating to a particular talk or talks to which you can either unmute your microphones or send a text whichever is to your convenience. And let me kick things off by asking a question from Sir Anjan in regards to Mr. Kutoso's talk. And that is, do you think a certain amount of procrastination is necessary to balance out work and complete tasks on a healthy pace? I repeat, do you think a certain amount of procrastination is necessary to balance out work and complete task on a healthy pace. I give the time to Mr. Kutozo. Okay, uh, that, that, that's a very quick, that, that's a very good question. Uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, it's sometimes it's necessary because like what matters is our priority, and then um, for example, we may have. Two works or yeah, two works at a time. But, um, but the other one is more uh, more important. Or if uh, we have to give more priority to this, then I think we have to procrastinate the other. So that, uh, when there is time that we can come. So I think uh, sometimes uh, procrastination also uh, becomes a uh, mandatory. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kutozo. I hope that clarifies the question. That, uh, I hope that clarifies the answer to the question. And if anyone else has any more queries or questions regarding any of the talks, I would give you the time now. Okay, if there is no more question, and if that is all, then we have come to the end of our session. And I would like to thank our dear participants, organizers, and each and every one present here for availing your time from your busy schedules. And I hope that we have all taken away something new and refreshing through today's sessions. Thank you and take care.